Hi, so you want to create a really nice wing balloon effect? Then you came to the right place. Stay tuned and watch the full tutorial. Guys, do you want to join a really nice server? We have tons of different channels. We have effects, modeling, look, the compositing. We will have resources for every type of discipline. So hop in and have fun. I also have a Patreon page where you can support me. I have every single file, I have polls, I have even some tools, guidance. So if you are interested, you may have a look. Thank you. Okay guys, so this is what we are going to be doing today. It's a dragon wing simulation. It's all made in Bellum in two different steps. First of all, what I'm going to do is to do a null with a scale on 0.01 because this scene is very big for Houdini in meters and I'm going to plug it in everywhere here. Secondly, I'm going to go to the master and this is basically the shot we're going to use, which is the shot SC01. So inside this geometry node, we're going to go to the top and explain everything. Let's grab the master scene 01. As you can tell, I am basically grabbing the dragon. I will convert the dragon to polygons, otherwise it's going to be a packed alembic. And I'm going to trail it because I need the velocity for later. I'm going to do a time shift on a place where I lack, like this one. This is a nice starting point, 10.15. And I'm going to do another frame on 10.01. And why is this? Because remember guys, this scene starts from frame uh, 1001 and goes to uh, 1135. But we don't have a parole. And as you can see, I'm using the, the frame range from 950. So what I'm going to do is to translate this time shift right here with the transform node. As you can see, without it's here and with it's here. And from camera, it looks something like this. So what I'm going to do with these two uh, blend nodes is to actually blend between these two positions just so we can have a fake kind of um, movement, right? And we're also going to do a trail. But as you can see, we are not going to use this, all this animation. We're going to do a switch just right on frame 1001 and switch to 1001. 10 0 to 10 1, sorry. And then we're going to have the whole animation. We're going to cache this out so it's easier for the PC to read. And we're going to create a null. This is out normal parole. Why normal? Because there is no adjustment to the dragon, it's just a parole. Now, moving to the, the actual uh, wing simulation, I'm going to split this guy and we're going to have the wings, right? I'm going to time shift this on a frame I like, for example, 1030. And I'm going to remesh it. This is very important because simulations like Bellum do like to be triangulated. And a remesh on one is going to be awesome. So this is the actual drawing. And then what I'm going to do is on the same frame, because I did Ctrl, Shift and Drag like so, so it's a reference. I'm going to do the other way around. I'm going to split the dragon and I'm going to group with uh, the name pin on points and bond box object. I'm going to pin everywhere here. You can see. So these are the borders. These are going to be like how I'm going to drag the wing around. I'm also going to do a curve, basically a drag curve and paint on top of it. And I'm going to do a edge fracture. The edge fracture is going to create, as you can see, as as well as the name says, a fracture that we will be able to see in simulations. I'm going to point the form everything right, like so. Basically, this is the wing which is moving. This is the wing which is not moving. So the rest position and, and the end result is going to be moved. And as you can tell, it's moving perfectly. So now that we have this, the point of form, we can move on to the actual balloon. I'm going to grab this. Uh, object with an object merge, this is the same. And I'm going to a volume set to cloth. As you can see, this is a drone here. I didn't change anything, I just click on cloth because it's, I don't need such a hard constraint relationship here. 
And I'm going to use Bellum Constraints on Pin into Target, Points, Group, Pin, and Match to Animation. Nothing else. This is already enough so we can have a simulation. As you can see, this is the edge fracture I created because I wanted it to be fracture. And let's see how it looks with the simulation on top. It's moving with the parole, which we cannot see. And then it just matches the animation perfectly. One thing to keep in mind is that the point they form keep low numbers of points and a radius of less than two. Because uh, otherwise, if, you, if we have like 15 points, and we see here, the more points we have, the less precise it's going to be in this particular case. So let's go back to a lower number of two. Let's actually delete everything but the velocity and the mask. Remember that we had a mask. Let's delete everything but the velocity and the mask, which is, we don't have a mask, so it's basically the same. And let's delete every single group but the same group. So let's delete everything but the velocity and let's delete every single group. We don't have the same, so it's the same. You can see we're cleaning up the geometry, but so we can only have the essential. Now that we have this, let's move on to the first balloon pass. Why well, is the first one? Because I want to make holes out of it. Now, these are called secondary simulations. Secondary simulations are simulations added on top of another simulation. So let's create a time shift out of this balloon first pass. Every single uh, time shift is going to be set to 960 because that's a frame I really liked how it looks because of this separation of this cat we made it for. So let's grab the dragon out normal parole, let's time shift also and let's split it. So let's look for it, it's here. And let's do a mask from geometry, distance from geometry. We can't see anything but basically if we change these parameters like I did and we go to mask and we turn this on, we can see there is a mask around here, right? This is going to be useful to determine which parts are going to be pinned and which parts are going to be resumed on top. Again, uh, the time shift set to 960. Let's rematch everything is going to be the same to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. So we can have the same mesh. Don't worry about these uh, hard edges. Everything is the same. We are creating some normals and we are blurring in this case the geometry 10 times in the post. Okay, so the difference between this and this is basically none. So we could technically be doing the following. And on this stage, we're bringing the mask from here. You remember this is a low res, and this is a high res. But as you can see, the mask remains, even though we are remeshing. This is a very nice node. And we can technically also transfer this with an attribute copy because we are doing the same remesh, so we have the same point number. And see, for example, here, this is 3468, and this is the same number. So we can easily make actually copy this one out. That why, that's why it was essential that these two guys are the same. So we can do an attribute noise set to multiply with these values. You can do whatever value you want. And the multiplier is going to keep this line of non-simulation. Or we are going to go here, which we don't have anything. This is going to be the blur. We're going to basically transfer from A to B. You can see this looks way better. And with a little wrangle, which is basically saying if the mass is bigger than the threshold, remove the points. So we can move this around so we can have more or less holes. We're not going to clean the geometry because look at this, some edges are strange. If we clean it, they're gone. Remember, always try to use clean geometries. And we're going to transfer with the mask again, right here. We're going to blur this mask a little bit and we're going to say, hey, you're going to be inside this group if your mask is bigger than X amount of threshold. So you can see that if we blast him, this is what have we got. This is what's going to be simulated, right? It's very, very clever. So, then we're going to set the names. This is a custom gnome I had. You can get it 
easily on my Patreon. But what it does is basically a connectivity node that do primitive and we are basically doing the following with a wrangle. We're doing this function. And this function, it's telling me to have a name when we set this to primitives. We're using the class number and we're using a name, in this case it's piece, and we're combining both of them to create an original name. And in this case, basically, I'm saying, hey, every piece is less than a certain threshold, for example, 1.6 on bounding box, is going to be deleted. So here is going to be, we are going to have a couple of pieces getting deleted. If we can find them, they are here. These pieces are very, very, very small and can be kind of disruptive on the simulation. This is a way to filter them. Instead here, basically, uh, I'm measuring uh, the area or measuring the volume with a measure uh, node or with a bounded box with this function. And then I'm splitting based on a threshold based on these values. If it's less than, it's going to go to the left. If it's, go it's bigger than, it's going to go to the right. I'm basically now grabbing this geometry, which is time shifted, of course, as a rest position, and then grabbing this as my simulation. This is the original simulation. So we can technically move this around. You can see, we can do uh, with a, with a visualized node. We can see how this looks without simulation. This is not simulated. This is only point deformed. We're going to delete everything. Everything right here. We're also deleting the mask. Everything but the velocity and the mask. And everything but the same group. Which the same group. Oh, this is a point group. So I'm not deleting this one. Then we are basically grabbing the object merge and plugging this in here so we can have so we can become more organized. And let's see what happens. We have the mask, we have the groups right here, and we're doing a vellum cloth with calculating varying on both the thickness and the mass. I didn't change anything else. This is going to work just fine. And I'm pinning, but I'm pinning on the simulation. You can see these are the pins, which are kind of where we need. We don't need to be so precise here. As long as we have some pins working around where we need, it's going to work just fine. So once that we simulate, it's going to look something like this. You can see we have tons of new of new new behaviors here and there, which is working quite nice. And we can save this on a value value. I save it to this route uh, from 1001 to 1135. And this allows me to pre-visualize this very, very, very fast, obviously keeping everything. And I'm using a balloon post process. With a little bit of extrusion and then a tangle, we can have thickness on our geometry. This is going to work on shading as the surface. We are deleting everything but the velocity and the mask and the steam. We're saving it here on a balloon, on a falcache with this name. And that's how you create a nice wing simulation hey guys thanks for watching the tutorial if you really like the video please join the discord community down below leave a comment and subscribe to the channel enjoy